We've been here for uh, a week and met some really incredible people, huh? Yes, we have. But I don't get it, because all of these people look so much better dressed than the last group. I know, right? <laughs> Congratulations. And they look smarter, too. Way smarter. And I'm pretty sure better looking. Yeah. It's because of Pam. I want you to look to the person next to you and just say, I look good today, don't I? <laughs> They're doing it. They're doing it. You know, we have been here for a week, and on uh, Wednesday, uh, I got to sit in on my wife's presentation to the Women's Insight uh, Network breakfast, and Jackie was talking about the Shia economy, and it... Uh, stimulated a very engaging and interesting discussion with the, with the audience. And a, a young uh, millennial agent uh, basically made the comment, he said, you know, when I tell my friends that I'm in the insurance business, they look at me and say, really? And the culmination of that discussion was, we need to make insurance cool. Yep. And I thought, what, a, what an incredibly great insight from one of your young colleagues. And it got me thinking, uh, you know, when you think about the insurance people and the financial advisors that have walked through our door, incredibly different, radically distinct, truly original, um, absolutely unforgettable. Are those, the, are those the words that come to mind for you when you think about the people that have walked through our door? Nope. Fun? No. Until I started working with National Life about three years ago, and I got to peek in and really learn about who you are, what you do, but more important than all that, why you do it. That's the cool thing about you. But I do not believe that all of you are owning that why. And that's why we wrote Cause. So what we're going to do is we are going to applaud you and celebrate your success in being here. The other thing that we are going to do is remind you of what you do really well. And then I hope the other thing that we will do is we will challenge you to shake it up and try some different things. People are willing to pay a little bit more. Guess what for? A relationship. A relationship. Now that's no news to you, but what's going on here is Tim Chisuli and his team at Planet Honda have created an unforgettable experience. And my question to all of you, even though you have arrived here, even though you, you earned it, even though you worked your fannies off right to get here, my question to you is, are you unforgettable in the sea of sameness that's out there? And let's just make it super real for you. And sorry, I'm not going to be Debbie Downer either, but for just a second. When, when the time comes that you choose to retire, maybe not entirely. Howie and I were talking about that. It's like, no, that's not even an option for me. I love what I do. Or if you decided to switch, if you needed to close shop, the question is, will you be missed? Will you be missed? And then I'm going to push it even harder because when you put your head on the pillow tonight and get refreshed and replenished, and when you wake up tomorrow morning, if I pose that question to you, will you have an answer? I don't know if you will, but we're going to give you four simple handles to hold on to that may help you gather, garner that answer. We're going to invite you to be hungry for change. That's what Tim Chisuli did. He was hungry for change. He wanted to differentiate in a sea of sameness. So I guess that's the question here this morning, guys, is are you hungry for change? In a world where the Department of Labor is creating rules and regulations that are creating a ground underneath your feet that is shifting, maybe tectonically, maybe not. Are you hungry for change? In a world where an incredible product development team is building new, sexy, exciting products led by somebody named Big Mac, are you hungry for change? 
in a world where everything and everyone around you is constantly getting better, where technology waits for absolutely nobody, and where the client you serve is getting smarter, better, and more educated, and therefore more demanding, a client, by the way, who's wired and dangerous, and is asking not what did you do for me yesterday, but what's next? What are you gonna do for me tomorrow? In that kind of world, are you hungry for change? It's the lesson. The lesson is we got to connect, connect, connect. And what I want to know this morning is how well connected are you to the sources of knowledge that are going to add new value to me? Are you connected in such a way that you can offer me truly meaningful insight that's designed to future-proof my family, give me the peace of mind that Mayron was talking about, and establishes you as a thought leader? Uh, industry expert, a trusted advisor, a, a, a guru. And look, I'm not just talking about, hey man, here's a brochure we put together on living benefits. It's really comprehensive and thorough. I think you ought to take a read. I'm talking about, here's the data, here's what we make of it based on everything we know about you, here's how we think it applies to you, here's what we think you should do about it, and here's how we are prepared to come around and help. Look, you walk through our door, and I'll tell you what my expectations are. My expectations are that you are a frickin' guru. Let me define guru for you. A guru is somebody that knows so much about my life, my temperament for risk, my financial goals, my family, the difference between how I look at money and how Jackie looks at money and how all that plays out in our relationship and our decision making in our families. And you know so much about my life and so much about my small business that you can tell me what I need before I ever know I need it. Is that you? Are those your agents? <clears throat> Even if you think you're a guru, however, do I trust you? See, that's the big question. Because Kevin just said, I want you to be my trusted advisor. What does trust mean? What's interesting to me as someone who really likes to go deep is a lot of people throw that word around, but yet not a whole lot of people are defining it. So I wanted to know what trust truly meant. And what I discovered is there's lots of models out there and that kind of thing. But there were a group of professors in Utah who actually went back in time. And they studied some of the most trusted leaders out there. And what they discovered is they said there are actually three primary drivers of trust. And I added a fourth. And here's what we know about trust. If you are to earn my trust and ultimately become my trusted advisor, our guru, that means that you absolutely are able. You've got the ability to talk me through, walk me through, run the numbers, right? But in the spirit of being hungry for change and being a lifelong learner, are you constantly upping your game, right? And that's the beauty of your partnership with National Life because they are equipping you with what you need to know, how you need to know it, when you need to know it, and now, not only how, not only when, not only what, but you've got a why, a true cause behind what you do. So ability is first. And second is my favorite in the four drivers, and it's benevolence. David and I talked at dinner at length last night about lessons that he had learned from his grandfather, three primary lessons. You know what, first and foremost, work hard. Second, do what you say you're gonna do, that's integrity. That's integrity. The third, I'm gonna let him tell you about because that's not what we're talking about today, but that's a really good story to learn from David. But Doing what you say you're going to do, that's integrity. That's living up to what your words are communicating to me. Those are important things in trust, in being my trusted advisor. But the other thing that's truly important, especially as you think about growing your agencies, about recruiting people in and making insurance cool and making insurance fun and creating a why behind the insurance that you offer, it's the impact that you have on people. An impact is how you land on people. 
How do you land on the people that you're trying to recruit? How do you land on people when you walk into the office? Is that impact, that landing on them, is it positive? I hope so. And if it is, cool. Is it negative? I hope not, but let's be real. We're real people. We have good days, we have bad days. We have highs, we have lows. We're real, so sometimes our impact isn't all that positive. Sometimes it's a little bit negative, but that's okay as long as we're honorable and we ask and seek forgiveness. But here's the question. When you land on people, is your impact questionable? Because if you're competing on price, if you're competing on rates and fees and those kinds of things, you're in a race, right? And you are in a race to the bottom. Because how low can you go, right, and still be successful? So at the end of the day, the question becomes, are you learning something new about me every time you touch me? Now let me ask you a question. How many of your lives have changed in the last 18 months or two years? I saw a lot of slides up here that suggest maybe they have. How many of you have had life changes in the last two years? How many of you aren't going to raise your hands no matter what I ask? Okay. I got to tell you, our lives have changed significantly in the last couple of years. If you think you knew me six months ago and you're operating based on that data, guess what? You may not know me today as well because my life has changed. Which begs a question, are you and your agents learning something new about me every single time you touch me? And look, I don't care this morning if you can't afford a multi-million dollar customer relationship management database, all right? How many of you can afford in this room a shoebox? Good. Behind the divider, F, have a card. Write Freiberg, F-R-E-I-B-E-R-G. Every time you touch me, write something new on the card. Make the shoebox real-time available to everybody else who touches us. Why is this important? You say, well, we kind of know the whole relationship thing, do you? I wonder how many of you in this room think of Amazon as your competitor. I wonder how many of you in this room think of the Ritz-Carlton as your competitor? How many of you have stayed at a Ritz-Carlton before? The Ritz-Carlton is one of your competitors. You know why? Because every client that stays at a Ritz and shops on Amazon and everybody in between builds an expectation in their head and in their heart that they bring right to their relationship with you. So here we are. We are at the finale. So what is it that gives you the courage to be hungry for change? What is it that gives you the courage to question the unquestionable, to compete on relationships, not on price, to enrich, not pitch? What is it that encourages you to get comfortable being uncomfortable? You know what we think it is? We think it's a noble, heroic cause.